Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be telling you all about me, my life, as a fangirl. I do consider myself a fangirl in some regards. I don't, I think there are some girls who go way more extreme than I. However, I have my stories, so I'm here to share those with you guys today on Let Me Tell Ya. So welcome to Let Me Tell Ya. I thought that it'd only be fitting for the occasion that I wear Hanson on my chest, because that's the kind of fangirl I am. And in my last Let Me Tell Ya video, I wore this shirt then as well, because that's just how dedicated I am to the role. All right, you guys, well, why don't we just go ahead and jump right in to me telling you all about the times I was a fangirl. <laughs> All right, so I figured like, let's start with the things that didn't have to do with Hanson because that's where a majority of the stories are gonna be is with the band Hanson. If you don't know who Hanson is, you will Google them and you will see this. However, that is not a very accurate representation as that is 21 years ago. These days, this is what they look like and their music is also much different. <laughs> Back then they were kind of like bubblegum pop and now they are more like 50s, 60s rock and roll with like a little spin of classic rock and uh, kind of hard to explain because it's just very them. But anyways, <laughs> let me tell you about all the other times that I was a fangirl besides with them because we'll get to them. My first story I'm gonna tell you guys is about Sanjaya Malakar. If you don't know who Sanjaya Malakar is, he, I think he was in sixth place on American Idol in one of the seasons somewhere in the middle. <laughs> and here is what he looks like. Yeah, so I was obsessed with him. I'm not sure what it was, but I was a huge fan of his. And then the, ne the very next season was David Archuleta, the, the season that David Cook won. And my grandma told me that she had tickets to a, a benefit concert. It was a Motown concert, and it was going to be at this high school in, in her town where she lives. And she said, well, Sinjaya Malakar is going to be there, and I got us tickets. And she was super excited, and I was just kind of like, hmm. I was kind of over it already. Then I like was like, you know what? This was really cool of her. Fine, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go to the Sinjaya Motown concert with her. All of a sudden, I was like, <gasps> Sinjaya. Again. So we went. So at this concert, like, you donate money, and if you donate, like, a certain amount of money, and I don't remember how much that was, but if you donate a certain amount, you get to go on stage. My grandma handed me, I think, like, a $5 bill. <laughs> it might have been a 20 but it was somewhere in there. And Sanjaya was actually collecting the money from the people in the audience. I remember my heart was just pounding, just so excited for him to even just take money out of my hand. And he comes by and I hand him the money and my grandma leans over and goes, hey, will you take her on stage? It wasn't enough to get on stage, by the way. I, in fact, I remember it being way not close to enough. <laughs> and he just like stops, looks at me and he goes, okay. <gasps> I was freaking out. He grabs me, he pulls me on stage with about five other people that other that had gotten pulled on stage also. So the concert ended and he started to leave and I just kind of like stood there for a second because it was like done, that was it, that was the finale. And then he like turns around and he comes back to me and I had like a 10 minute conversation with this guy, I talked to him about how I wanted to try out for American Idol and he was like, oh my gosh, you should totally do it. And he told me a little bit about his experience and, and he hugged me goodbye and then he starts like kind of dropping jogging away from me and as he's jogging away from me he does this thing where he like turns around backwards and he's like jogging backwards and he's like if you go on American Idol I'll vote for you oh my gosh I lost it on the inside I was pretty good about holding it back but oh my god I lost it another thing that I've done that's kind of fangirly I was trying to win tickets to go see Selena Gomez when she was in my city I probably wasn't supposed to but I used both my work phone and my own cell phone to call the radio every time to try to win tickets and I remember it would like change the number every time of what caller you needed to be. And I think this one particular time, it was the seventh caller. I called with both of them, like go. That's the trick. My mom taught me that trick. The first one picked up and they said, sorry, you're the first caller. The second one picked up and said, sorry, you're the sixth caller. I was so mad, so close, so close. But I had already bought tickets to the concert anyway, but I was just so extra, I really wanted to get floor tickets, which was the goal. Another time regarding Taylor Swift. So 
I did not have tickets, but I decided I was gonna go try and win them, and a friend of mine went with me. I had been trying to win them, again, on the radio, and it wasn't working, so a friend and I went together to just, um, go see if we could either win them from a radio station or scalp them. But everything just like felt like it was lining up. Like the juju was there. I was feeling the juju. Somebody was pulling out of a parking spot like a quarter of a mile away, m mirac miraculously, when we got there. So we found a parking spot. I know that doesn't sound that exciting, but you just understand, like I felt the juju flowing. The good juju was it was real. So I think it took us probably getting like halfway there from the car to decide, okay, fine, we're just gonna buy tickets and then we'll just still try to win them because we wanna go. We're here, we might as well make sure we get to this concert. And we got like row M, way in the third top section, like way like looking like right onto the front of the stage. She was a P, like, like, I mean, it was, complete definition of nosebleed and it was not cheap. But then we went and we entered at two different radio stations to try to win tickets. So she, we both entered our name at one and both entered our name at another and then we went and stood at our respective places. But it was gonna be a while before the drawings. So we stood at KISS 106.1. They were doing giveaways. They were just like throwing, not throwing really, but they were like giving stuff to people in the audiences, like merchandise from Taylor Swift's tour, books. I did get this like, book from the concert. Oh wait, I have it. Here it is right here. It's this like colorful book from the tour and Bender picked me out specifically, specifically out of the audience to give me this booklet. Okay, something, something's up here. Something's up here. So anyways, it was time for the drawing. So we went to our respective places and there was like a lot. There was like six drawings or something like that and um, if you weren't there, you didn't get your ticket, obviously. There were these two girls. These two girls were so obnoxious. Every time there was a name, like two seconds goes by without somebody saying anything. They're like, next name, next name, I just go, just go, just shut up. And there were these guys there and they were flirting with them. There was this guy down there and they were just like, like twirling their hair and they were just like whispering things to him and they were like, our names are blah, blah, blah and blah, blah, blah. Ugh. And then it gets to the last name. This guy stops the person who's drawing and walks up to him on the stage he was on, whispers something in his ear, and then what do you know? He draws out blah blah blah's name. Really? You drew blah blah blah's name? <laughs> I immediately went, that is Bull crap, except I didn't say crap. And I was so angry, I was like, let's just go. And I tried to explain to her as we were walking, like, it's not even necessarily that I didn't win, of course I would have loved to, but it's not necessarily about that. It's about the fact that these girls flirted their way into tickets. There were, they were like 17, 18 years old, and there were these sea of like 12 year olds who were crying their eyes out because they didn't win. And these girls, one because they flirted. I could not let it go. So I was just like, I'm going back there. And she was like, are you sure? And I was like, yes, I'm going back there. And I like turned around, I just marched back up to that booth. I started going off on this guy. And I was just like, I am sorry, but that was bull that those girls won the tickets. And you know it. I watched them flirting with you guys the whole time. The fact that their name was drawn last, I'm sorry, that was not a coincidence. That was so done on purpose, I can't even and believe it. And this guy was just like, whoa, 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 I swear. I swear, this is just a crazy coincidence. I was standing my ground. I was like, this is, like there were, and I told them the same argument I've already told you, so no need to repeat. And I was just like, look, like I'm sorry that I'm going off on you right now, but I just, I didn't like the injustice of it. I just had to say something. This guy who was trying to stand his ground so much suddenly breaks down and says, look, I kind of feel bad, so, how about we trade tickets? Uh, yeah, please. So they took my nosebleed ticket, gave us a first section. It was still kind of far from the stage, but it was down below. So instead of like just seeing the top of her head, which is what we would have seen, the top of her head like a pin needle, we saw her more just like, you know, like, like maybe like that big. Anyways, that's my fangirling story over going to a Taylor Swift concert. So Hanson time. I have been a fan of Hanson since I was six years old. 
six. It has been 21 years, still a diehard fan. That will never change. I waited at, my dad waited with me after the concert for like two and a half hours just for Zach, the younger one, to walk by and wave like 30 feet away. <laughs> That was it. So I've been to 10 Hanson concerts now. I think it was at my fifth Hanson concert that I finally met one of them. My roommate and her friend dropped me off in front of this venue and I look over and they are standing outside the venue. I gathered up my stuff and I was like, okay, bye. And I like ran across the street. I don't even think I looked to see if there were cars coming. I just like booked it across the street. Taylor was standing on a table and he's just like talking to the crowd. And I, so I was like standing there and I wasn't really, I was mesmerized. I don't think I've ever been this close to them before this. And then all of a sudden I like looked to my left and I, I kid you not, like two feet away from me was Zach, like standing there. And I was like, <gasps> So I walked up to him and I was like, can I get a picture with you? And he was like, uh, sure. <laughs> but you know, I could tell he was kind of uncomfortable, but to be real with you guys, I didn't care. I waited 13 years for this. Don't give me that. I did the thing where I told him I've loved you guys since I was six. <sighs> After that concert that night, when I was waiting for my friend to come pick me up, I was waiting for Hanson, and there was these guys like, we can't tell you when they're coming out, we can't, we don't know, and we can't tell you anything. And then all of a sudden I see these legs, I see these legs running, I could see on the other side of the tour bus, because I was standing kind of on one side of the tour bus, I saw, I could tell it was Taylor's feet. I think I had caught a glimpse of him, so I knew it was him running. <laughs> All the stage crew people wouldn't budge. <laughs> a year goes by and they have another tour and I go see them in Portland. I actually ended up getting Isaac's autograph, but not meeting him. I actually had to have like three girls pass my paper to get him to sign like over their shoulders and uh, miraculously they got it back to me. The security let girls like swarm Isaac, but they made us line up in a line for Taylor. So I'm waiting in line. So so nervous out of my brains. I didn't bring a camera because I didn't want to distract myself from the concert. So I didn't have a camera with me. The girl in front of me in line had like a professional camera and she was like, I'll take it for you and I'll email it to you. So he comes up, he signed my shirt, gave me a hug after I asked for it. <sighs> yeah, this that's the point of the story, Ellie. Just tell it that I left. I was freaking out, so excited, couldn't sleep that night. And I was just, I had given this girl my email, so I was just waiting for the picture. Two weeks goes by and I have not gotten this picture. So I decided to find this girl. First I like posted on the forum like, does anybody know who this girl was? It was in Portland, Oregon. Are you that girl? Can someone please tell me I really want my picture with Taylor? Someone was like, check Facebook. So I went on Facebook, found the event for the concert in Portland and clicked on who was attending. And I kid you not, she was the first person on the list. Very top of the list was this girl out of hundreds of girls who stayed after that stood right in front of me in line and had my picture. I was just meant to have that picture in my possession is what it was. So two years later, we I go back down, maybe three years later, go back down to Portland for another Hanson concert, of course. It's actually four years later. This is four years later, sorry. This is four years later. Wow. But I decided for the first time ever to actually sign up for a meet and greet. And I was at work and work, it, like I was at the end of my work day and I checked my email and there it was, congratulations, you won a meet and greet definitely fangirling over the fact that I just want to meet and greet to actually meet them, not just take a passing picture with them. I was like running up and down telling everybody I could find that I won the meet and greet because I told everybody, I always tell everybody these things, that I had to sign up for the meet and greet. So I'm running up and down the hallways, finding anyone I can saying, oh my gosh, I won the meet and greet, I won the meet and greet. I got to Portland obsessively early to make sure I would not, nothing would go wrong. I got to the venue two hours before the meet and greet because I really, really didn't want anything to go wrong. And I look over and Isaac, keep in mind, he's the only one at this point that I haven't at least met in passing. And I see him walk from around the tour bus, kind of where I was. And yeah, it was a little bit on purpose, okay? And I was just like, Isaac! And he was like, oh, hi. And he was so friendly. He offered me a hug and I went, oh my gosh. And he laughed at me. And the meet and greet was not 
I don't know what I was expecting. I think some girls get a little too worried about bugging them and so they like backed off a lot and I was like, um, this is what we're here for. So I made sure that I socialized with them and I had a conversation with all three of them. When Zach met me, he stuck out his hand to give me a handshake. I was like, excuse me. One I particularly remember was Taylor. I was talking to him about how in high school, that was one of the huge things I was known for. I was like, I was the handsome girl. And he was like, oh, did you have to advocate for us? And I mistakenly was like, uh-huh. <laughs> I should have been like, oh, you know, like I stuck up for you. But I was just like, yeah, pff, a lot. Somehow all three of them ended up signing my shirt at the exact same time. And then we took a picture and then we were leaving and saying goodbye to them. Taylor gave me a hug. And when he was hugging me, he said, thank you for being handsome girl think for a second of your biggest idol. If they said like, thank you for being my supporter, thank you. <laughs> You're gonna freak out. Like, I <sighs> Um, yeah, and then this last October I waited, it was like three hours after the concert ended to meet them and I did, well, to see them again and I got to take pictures with a couple of them. But there you have it. Those are some of my stories of being a fangirl, proud and true. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was entertaining to some degree. And if you like my Let Me Tell Yes, which is AKA my story time videos, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe by hitting the tempting red button right down there below my video and I will see you later. Fans in forever. Now if only I'd ever met David Archuleta then it'd be complete. Um, but we were pretty sure we didn't want to scalp radio, uh, sc uh not the radio people. <laughs> this is turning out to be really long. <laughs>